Hello, hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and it's a time where we can relax and craft and we work on a project together for about an hour uh, and we work on the projects from beginning to end. So we are continuing on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And we are at the quilting stage, so we're pretty far along here. I am quilting in the ditch uh, in between the lines of every single one of these zigzags, so right where the seams connect. I'm kind of doing that just to get everything stitched down. Um, really, we could probably end after I'm done with that. We'll have enough quilting to hold the quilt together. But I'm using this quilt as a tool, to a learning tool, to try and start um, free motion quilting. So I'm not good at that. I have barely, barely, barely even touched that technique, free motion quilting. So after we get done stitching in the ditch, stitching all these little zigzags, I am going to attempt to do some free motion quilting. And we're going to learn how to do that. I'm going to use uh, Krista's book. Um, she has a book that uh, she does free motion quilting with. I'm going to use her book to uh, to learn from and the link for the pattern and the book are in here. Uh, I got my glasses on <laughs> tonight again so I shared these before. These are my crazy, I think they're so silly, they're like my 80s glasses but these are my blue light uh, blocking glasses and uh, um, I finished my, uh, I finished the uh, sleeping book <laughs> that I've been talking about. I finished that sleeping book tonight and I had to return it to the library. But one of the things, you know, they talk about, and it, I'm sure you've heard this before, is not to look at computer screens or that sort of thing late at night because uh, you don't want that blue LED light pounding at you. And I don't do that much. Like I try and stay away from my phone late in the evening and all that. But then I realized, you know what? <laughs> I have LED lights shining on me during this hour when I'm with you guys and I'm staring at the phone the whole time. So I completely kind of disregarded this time in that, uh, in that world of like getting to sleep and that blue light. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to break out my blue light glasses when I'm here with you guys. So I'm thinking you'll, you'll see these a whole lot more uh, lately. And uh, <laughs> so hence the funny glasses again. But all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get stitching tonight. Thanks for joining me again. Oh, yeah, and we figured out the problem from last night. So last night I was not on. Uh, we had a little Wi-Fi problem. The problem was that uh, my, uh, we were figuring out, uh, we were just kind of trying to protect our network a little bit more, so we... We went through like all the devices, like we looked into the router and went through all the devices that are or could be connected, like all the devices that it could see like in the neighborhood. And we were gonna just block the ones that we didn't know. But my phone here wasn't labeled as anything, so it got in the blocking. But now we got it figured out again. <laughs> so you won't, you won't lose me this time around. All right, um, we've done, four rows, so basically two zigzags on either side. So one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm hoping we can get through these two tonight. And we have less, less and less bulk as we go over here, so it should be easier and easier. So let's get going. And uh, um, just another note, we are on bobbin watch. So we still have not run out of our first bobbin. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to get this settled. We've not run out of the first bobbin. So um, we might be getting close. It feels like maybe we should be getting close. But we're kind of counting how many rows it takes before we run out of a bobbin, because then for all subsequent bobbins, we'll know when we're getting um, real close to real close to needing another one so we can keep an eye out for it. All right, get started for the night. Bunch of little stitches, and then I up the stitch length. 
and get my grip it out and we're off to the races. See if we can steam through these tonight. I can feel myself kind of wiggling, kind of like when you're driving in the car and instead of looking far out in front of you to go straight, I'm looking too close and I feel like I'm squiggling a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to try and correct that a little bit tonight. I'm always trying to get better, um, improve as I go on these things. So if I can notice, if I notice things happening, I want, I want to try and improve them make them habits. So I'm going to look further down this time and see if that helps. Keep glancing up because uh, I do want to be able to stitch in that, make sure I'm still stitching in the ditch. I think I just need to go slower. This is working better. Wow, my stitch length feels really short. I'm going to lengthen it a little bit. Zig ziggery. Yeah, so sorry about, sorry about last night. Um, however, <laughs> since Wi-Fi wasn't working, um, that did give me the opportunity to, to finish my library book before it was due. I don't think I would have been able to uh, finish it otherwise. <laughs> so it worked out in that way, I suppose. There, I think I'm sewing a little straighter. I'm, I'm keeping in mind that, you know, distance, um, you know, like in driving in a car, looking out ahead instead of just right at the needle. So I think that's, I think that's helping. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet that you guys were worried. Yeah, and tonight I wasn't actually sure if, um, like positive, positive, I would make it because we just had like a little blast of weather here. Uh, we had a severe thunderstorm warning, warning, but just like a half hour long from 7.30 to 8.30. But it was um, hardcore with constant lightning and, you know, the type of storm that power could have easily gone out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh... Tonight was in question because of that, but storm ended and now we're good to go again. One of those summer, summer squalls or whatever. But you know, in the warning, in the, in the, in the thunderstorm warning, like on my, my weather app, um, it's like, watch out for, you know, blowing winds and, and hail and, you know, watch out for tree limbs and stuff. I'm like, oh, great, because we have a, ooh, we're stuck a little. Um, we have a tree, our tree in a front yard that we think might be rotting. And it's really close to the house. So we're thinking that we might have to get it cut down. And, uh, um... Oh, funny Gretchen. I owe about $3 on my library card, too. Um, but we think that we need to get this tree cut down. And, oh, God, it would just suck if we had a really big storm and it just fell on the house or something. So that's going higher on my agenda next week, I think. Oh, you, you wound up ripping out a bunch of... on a knitting project. Oh, bummer. You told... Your husband, I didn't like an area and asked him if I should take it out. He said yes, otherwise. Oh, uh, you'll fret about it until you do. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta sometimes you just gotta do it again. Alright, I feel like I'm going straighter. I don't know if it's because um maybe I have less bulk. That I'm dealing with, but I feel like I can concentrate on making straight seams. I'm not even really thinking about moving the fabric anymore, um, which is good because that's kind of all I was thinking was like, how can I push this fabric along um, before? But I think really grabbing this chunk with this hand and having this rubber stopper here, this helps me just guide it, you know, so it doesn't veer off. And this here helps me just move it along and keep it loose underneath so that the presser foot is pulling instead. So I think, I think I'm getting a system down here that I'm pretty happy with. 
and these are short enough little bits, these chevrons, that I can just, I haven't had to like um, be choppy very much. Like that one, I did the whole length of that with one, one movement. So happy about that. I'm, I'm taking that as a sign that I'm hopefully getting a little bit better at dealing with the bulk, which I'm thinking will come in real handy once we get to free motion quilting. Ooh, but now we're really bulky. There we go. Just getting kind of a flat surface before we start. Yeah, the fluffing where um, we just scrunch the quilt together versus rolling it, that has been very, very helpful. So um, I will be doing that from now on. Plus, you don't have to deal with getting all rolled perfectly. The scrunching is definitely working better for me. So this is easier when there's more bulk closer to me than when there's more bulk like on the other, the far end of the table over there. Um, so that's interesting. I thought it would kind of be the other way around. But I'm finding it's easier to handle when it's just in my lap and to my side on that TV tray. But yeah, the stuff that's way back on the end of the table is being heavy and annoying. Oh God, you had a whole a huge tree fall on the top of your roof under the other side. We we're getting groceries and not home. Oh God, no fun. So we already we had a huge branch of this same tree fall um, a couple of years ago like a completely break off. And you know, the branch was the size of its own tree and uh, it missed, it fell in between the house and our car that was in the driveway. So it missed both by like zero inches. Like, I don't know, it fell in the exact perfect spot uh, for it to fall. Um, and I'm thinking we won't get that, that lucky again. <laughs> So, um, and now it, it's looking, it's looking more rotted, like more animals are eating at it and stuff. So I think it's, it's, it's time to discuss cutting it down and finding a place that can do that. And ugh. we tend to put all that stuff on the back burner and I think it needs to, needs to come up, especially with all these summer storms and stuff coming. And when that fell, um, when the tree branch fell, it was like 3 a.m. in the middle of a huge storm. Um, and it shook the ground. Like I heard the thump and it shook the ground. It woke me up. And I'm like, oh my God, did our tree just fall over? So I don't want just, and that was just a branch. If that happens to the whole tree, ugh. But anyway, then we can, um, it's going to be, sad to get rid of a tree, but I don't want that falling on my house. And I'd rather plant like some river birch or something there instead. I think that'd be prettier. We think it's a silver maple and those apparently commonly fall down. And it's like, well, why are they planted near houses in our neighborhood? That makes no sense. So knowing you do storms and the lights went out by you. Ah, oh, and then you have to recalibrate everything. Yeah, all the clocks and everything. That's always a bummer. But yeah, I was a little worried that would happen tonight, but we ended up okay. Um, I have, Tammy, I have not used the quilting gloves before. However, I don't do it well with gloves. I have like the teeniest hands and any glove is always like this far beyond me. Um, and I just feel a little confined, so I haven't actually tried them. I do have some similar gloves that I could try one of these evenings. Maybe I'll go grab those tomorrow. Um, but I like that I can just put this down and I can move my hand around and stuff. I mean, it is a little extra step. I got to kind of move it around the way when I'm putzing with it. Um, but it's also summer coming up here and it's nice to not have gloves. Um, 
I'm really liking them, although, like I said, I don't really have that glove comparison. What I also like is there's the opportunity to use this for ruler work later. Like I could use this curved edge uh, with the free motion quilt foot and I could use the um, this edge as well. Your gloves were new so you wanted to use them and you really love them. You think the grippets would be better. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I will, um, I have some gloves. Um, they're meant for cutting like they're cut resistant a little bit, but they do have all the rubber grips on the bottom like quilting gloves do. So maybe maybe I'll give those a try as quilting gloves. We'll see how those work. Today's Thursday, right? Yeah, so there's one more day. So tomorrow, I will go grab those, uh, and then tomorrow I'll give those a try instead, and we'll see. The gloves make your hands sweat. See, Sue, that's what I'm worried about too. I'm just afraid they're going to be too long, and I'm going to just feels super confined. All right, the bulk is... Shimmy this up a little bit further. You have the kids' garden gloves with rubber grips because you have tiny hands too. I might have to look at those. I Last year I bought some gardening gloves and, you know, was having the same problem. I don't know if I tried any of the kids' ones on, but none of the women's fit just right and when they were kind of the right length or close to the right length then it was so tight in some other weird place I don't know I need like a glove like a <laughs> a glove tailor or something I don't know get some couture uh, quilting gloves that'd be pretty sweet that type of tree are called widow makers here oh jeez. Yep, so we're going to have to call um, a tree guy, arborist. And the stupid thing is that we had an arborist, or a tree, yeah, an arborist. Um, after the branch fell, we had a guy come up and look at it, and he thought it was going to be fine. And I don't think that was right. It does not look fine. <laughs> so we're going to have to, I don't know. That's higher on my list now. No, it's it's um, assuming I don't I haven't heard of a bread for pear before. I'm assuming I mean I'm assuming that's not what ours is. Um, if a bread for pear is actually a fruit tree, then it's it's definitely not a fruit tree. Um, it has those helicopters too, which plant other trees all over the yard, and we have to be diligent about getting them. So we'd be happy to not have to deal with that anymore too, even though our no our whole neighborhood has those helicopter trees. You know what I'm talking about by helic? I don't know what they're really called, but they're those pods that have the wings on either side with the little seed in the middle, and then they rotate as they fall. We call those helicopter trees. <laughs> I'm thinking that's probably not what they're really called. But yeah, they're all over our neighborhood, so even if we got rid of our tree, I'm sure our yard would still be full of them. Helicopter trees. Yeah, so Deborah, I think it's a silver maple. Man, that one felt easy. I didn't have any bulk situations. I used to love those when I was little. Helicopters, all the little helicopter trees. I actually still kind of think it's neat, the little spinny helicopters. Um, but I don't like that they make trees everywhere. And um, Oh, Robin, I'm so with you. Now if we don't get them in time, they start growing um, trees in the gutters. Which sucks. Oh, sounds about right. You have a maple in your front yard. Um, Seth, I am using a Kenmore sewing machine. It is from the 70s. Oh, I believe 78? Either 74 or 78. I'll have to look it up again. But it, it's a Sears, Sears Kenmore. Um, my mom got it in college, I think. 
and I snagged it from her. So nothing special. Um, it doesn't do any fancy stitches. It does do um, typical like uh, dressmaker stitches. So like there's some stitches for stretch um, fabrics and, and all that, but it doesn't do any, like you're not gonna have like, like a little vine with a flower on it or anything like that. None of those. And it's still, it's mechanical. It doesn't have any computer stuff going on with them. You used to stick those in your nose, Athena, the, the helicopter trees. Oh man. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I've been using it for a while. And whenever, whenever I bring this machine to the, um, whenever I get it like tuned up or if there's something wrong with it, the, the guy, the technician guy is always like, oh, that machine's going to last forever. Your great grandkids are going to be able to use that machine still. Ooh, you use a 40s Singer clone. Yeah, so I got that um, at that, uh, that uh, world's largest garage sewing textile garage sale. I got that Kenmore from the 40s, that cool one that had that crinkle finish, that black matte black crinkle finish. Um, I really want to um, really want to start using that to... That just looks like it's just going to be really fun. So that's a Kenmore as well. And then I still have, I got that 60s Kenmore um, <laughs> that I really got because I wanted the case that it came in, the cabinet. Because I wanted to put this 40s Ken, Kenmore in the, um, in this cabinet that this 60s Kenmore was in, which looks a lot like this 70s Kenmore, um, but I have not, I have not looked at it. I haven't oiled it or um, tested it out. Um, they tested it before they sold it at this thing, and um, that's why it was so cheap. It was ten dollars for the 60s Kenmore plus the cabinet together it was ten dollars, <sighs> which is just crazy town. Um, but I think it wasn't really working very well. So I'm going to take a look at that and see if I can get it all oiled up and fixed and see if I can open stuff up and see what's wrong with it. But I, I haven't had time to, well, I haven't made time to, to deal with that yet. But I would like to get the 40s one going one of these days. Yeah, one of these weekends or something, I'll just have to spend an hour or so sewing on the that black 40s Kenmore. That would be fun. And do a little live video of it or something. Yeah, I know, Noeline. $10, right, for the cabinet and the machine. And the cabinet's cute. We wanted a cabinet because it... It's kind of like low profile, like it just looks like a little end table and it has legs. It's not all filled in. Sometimes sometimes there's so many drawers and the back is all filled in and it just looks huge and heavy, these cabinets. This didn't feel like that. So it didn't feel like a huge piece of furniture and uh, that's kind of what we liked about it. Um, and for $10. And it fit that cool 40s Kenmore. We measured, measured it, and it fit that machine. So we're like, okay, sold. It's in our in our living room. Uh, it has to stay closed. The cabinet. I mean, when you open the cabinet, then it gets that huge leaf on the other side. Um, but with that leaf open, then it doesn't really fit in the living room anymore. I have to move a chair to to use it. So it's closed. Um, but it's still a cute table, and I have, like, flowers and stuff on it, and a little lamp for reading. Um, but I would like to make an effort to open it up and use it. And, you know, sometime maybe we'll find a spot for it where it can just stay open. Uh, my husband's great-grandma's machine, though, we, um, we found a cabinet ages ago. I've been using it for a table. Um, but we got a cabinet that we've got for free. Um, it's this Art Deco cabinet. Um, 
And it was at the dumpster at our old apartment building. <laughs> I mean, it, it has a little, like, quite a bit of water damage on the top and everything. So, I mean, it's not in great condition, but it could probably be refinished. Um, I've just waxed it. But I've been using it for a table for years, like probably 10 years. And I finally decided, you know what, I think John's great-grandma's old singer, like 1920s singer, I think that would fit in this cabinet. So that I actually have open, it's in my office, um, and it's open with a project on there. So whenever I, you know, get get stuck on something or just need a two second break, I can, I have um, just a project, I just have a bag of scraps and I'm just gradually sewing tiny scraps together on, on that um, that 1920s singer. Um, so that's been really fun. And I love that, I love that the cabinet is getting its use of how it was intended to be used. And I love that um, my husband's great grandma's sewing machine is actually out and can be seen and is being used. I just love that so much. So getting, getting it together here with the sewing machines finally. I'm trying to honor them because, man, based on the prices of these things, it doesn't seem like anyone seems to care that much, and that's super sad. You would think these sewing machines would be, like, a couple hundred dollars or, or you know, I don't know, they're vintage antique, you know, pieces of history, and it just baffles me that based on the price of things, no one could care less. Or they're just being thrown out. I mean, you know, it's because they're heavy. They're heavy, right? They're heavy and bulky. So if you have one in your house, it's taking up a ton of space and it's annoying to move around, right? So I suppose, and there, there's, there's an excess of them, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I, I understand. I understand um, logically why, why they're always, you know, very low price. Not always, but why they are um, sometimes low priced or, or not desired items. Yeah, sometimes when you, sometimes they can be expensive. That's when you find someone that knows what they're talking about. But um, I don't know. I wish more people cared about these vintage machines. Yeah, I follow a few, a few, um, I'm in a few Facebook groups for vintage sewing machines, and I'm just baffled all the time. Like, I found this, hey, this is $50 at this, you know, rummage sale. Is that a good deal? And it's like this beautiful, beautiful machine with the cabinet. And I'm like, oh my goodness, snag them all, you know? Yep, exactly. So it's what someone will pay for them. Yeah, they're not, it's not cheap everywhere. You still kind of got to get lucky, right? I mean, it's still, it's still a treasure that you got to find. Um, you know, and some are valued more than others and, and all that. But just the amount that aren't valued or just people don't care is just sad. Yeah, me too, Nolene. I love the mechanics of it and it's all like manual and I just love the history of it too. Oh, you looked up the Widowmaker tree. It's a tree with large limbs high up that are just hanging there, ready to talk or ready to, to fall at any time. Oh, wow. Widowmaker trees. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about a few branches on this one. And the whole center area, I'm afraid, is hollow. Ugh, dangerous. So, I don't know. Maybe next by next week we should get, get a tree guy on the phone here. Maybe that'll be the weekend project. Doing some research on that. I know some neighbors um, did that a couple of years ago. I'll have to get on the next door app and which I don't use hardly, but like maybe someone will know a guy there. A company that that can take a look at it. To start asking around. Oof, my hand's slipping. I don't have the thing here. 
definitely a noticeable difference between not having any um, gripping surface versus having the grip it. Um, here I can just barely rest my hand on here and move it around like this. I feel like I'm sliding and I got to really push. Um, I feel like I got to grab, grab onto it somehow. Um, and this is doing the job for me really easily. But yeah, tomorrow we'll try uh, the, the gloves. We'll try grippy gloves. Oh, your husband's cardiologist called his block artery the Widowmaker. Oh man, that's not nice. He had a full grown poplar tree removed too close to the yard or too close to the home. Saw a bad spot at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, it was hollow most of the way up. Oh my god, yep, see that's what I'm that's what I'm nervous about. And this is a pretty dang big tree. It it would cause a whole pile of damage no matter what direction it fell. It's gotta, it's gotta get looked at. I don't, I don't trust it there anymore. And actually, we have a small decorative cherry tree uh, in our front yard. And we think that might be dead too. Like it just, it just, just died. I, I don't know. We had, um... There's a weed that's growing around and then that might have suffocated it or I don't know. I think t cherry trees are just a little touchy sometimes. So I don't know. It's either starting really late, but it seems seems pretty dead. So we might be redoing our whole front yard in some fashion. We'll be editing out things at least. Ugh. Ah, Jared says, call an arborist ASAP, so that's my mom. My brother and uh, parents were here this weekend, and we were talking about that tree, and my brother is like, get it down. Jared says, call an arborist ASAP. Ah, all right, fine, that'll be our weekend project. Find a firewood guy. Oh yeah, so that's what we were hoping. We were hoping that we could cut it down and use it for firewood. Um, I'm a little nervous that it's full of grubs. Um, yeah, we'll need to get a tree removal service. Uh, but <laughs> there were these very, very gross grubs in the branch that fell, and so I can presume that they're in the rest of the tree too. Yeah, man, the more I talk about this, the more we got to get on top of this uh, pretty quick. Boo! What a pain. Guess that's the home ownership situation though, right? All right, just three more little bits. I might try and do one more row tonight. Since we're getting a little faster here, I think a lot of it has to do with that we're um, we're close to the side, so we're we're not having as much bulk to deal with. But I think we can crank out another row this evening. Oh, the grubs move out. Just be sure to oh press spray the house. Yeah, ugh, God, we're gonna have to do that. How are you filming uh, without the camera in the way? So Seth, I have um, a large arm. Actually, I can show you guys. Here, I'll take a photo quick and show you. All right, I'm gonna show you this photo. So I have a, <laughs> here we go. Here's the sewing machine. Here's, here's what you're, you're seeing right here. And I have the phone on like this big arm here. And it has like a cord going up here. But um, this, so this, this big arm is what allows me to like get in here and then get up on the top and kind of move around quite a bit. But the arm is also the reason why it shakes a lot. So 
I need kind of like a solution for, for that. But I do like that I can get up really high and I can get down and I can flip it towards me really easily. But that's, that's the scenario right here. So my head is, um, you know, I can read this and see it, but I can still look at what I'm sewing. So that's what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> But yeah, I can, um, I just have to look up just a hair and then I can read, read your guys' comments on the phone. Okay, that was a speedy one. One more. Better get to take it, uh, get it taken down. Yeah then have a limb go through a roof. Oh, you had that off five years ago? Oh my gosh, scary. Okay, yeah. I do not want that. Oh gosh, I am not watching my bobbin, but um, it looks like we're still stitching, so we're good still. So let's see, we're, we're six rows and we still, we're still on bobbin one. Oh, I thought I could just do this one row without the grip it, but I need it still. So we're good still. That's a little surprising. This is a, you know, this is a lot of thread I think we're using. A little surprise we're not, um, we didn't run out of it. Oh, maybe insurance would, I think insurance takes care of it if it does fall on us, but I didn't think of checking to see if insurance could help us take it down like a preventative thing we'll have to look into that that's a good suggestion all right I am going to try and get one more stitched line out of here tonight should mean this all the way back okay where are we we just finished these uh this guy's next Oh gosh, this red thread is getting everywhere. I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if I should maybe use a larger needle. Cause this is 30 weight thread. So um, it's 30 weight thread. I'm gonna just do the bob, the bob until it runs out. I'm not gonna take it out if it's a little bit. We'll just start it up wherever I leave off. Cause I don't, I don't want a bobbin that doesn't have much on. Insurance usually only takes the trees after they fall, not preventative. Ugh. That's lame, Linda. Um, yeah, probably that's probably the case. Oh yeah, sorry guys, I was talking about that. So this is um, 30 weight thread, which is thicker than what I normally use. Um, when we are sewing stuff together, we're using 50 weight, I believe, which is which is thinner. Um, it's kind of fun to use a bigger thread, like a 30 weight for quilting, because then the quilting is more visible. Um, I'm using an 80, an 80, 12 needle. And I'm thinking, like when this bobbin, when this bobbin is done, we'll clean the machine a little bit too. I think I might switch to a 90, um, what is it, a 90-10? Is that how it works? Um, I think I might switch to a 90-10 uh, needle because that's just a little bit bigger. It's going to poke bigger holes, but I don't think we care too much about that. But just because there is so much fuzz, that to me that's saying that the thread is rubbing like it's rubbing um, on the inside of the eye of the needle to have that fuzz go everywhere. Um, so it's, yeah, so it's, it's rubbing as it goes through the eye of the needle. 9014. Okay, thanks, Ramona. Um, so thinking maybe going, it's worth an experiment, maybe going up to a 9014 uh, will, will prove to be the right size for the thread. So I think that's my new plan, just because it, it, it is um, really 
we're getting a lot of red fuzz around here. But it's still sewing, so I'm not going to deal with that until I switch the bobbin. Um, for this quilting, um, I think I'm going to try and clean the bobbin area, like defuzz it and maybe put a little oil on the machine. And uh, maybe not oil every time, but um, at least defuzz it like wipe out the fuzz and whenever I change the bobbin this time around. Um, just to keep this guy healthy as we're, as we're sewing. So we'll take a little time in between bobbins. But yeah, 9014, we'll, we'll switch to that next um, with this, when this bobbin's done. Which, who knows, maybe any second here. Oop, caught on something here. Um, I've not heard anything about the sampler. I, I, uh, the Splendid Sampler 2, I think I might contact them again. I'm trying to still, if they let me work on that project, I'm kind of trying to figure out the best way to do that yet because we have all these other projects that we're working on here too. I don't know. We will see though. I will email her um, by next week. I have not used the pipe cleaner. Um, man, maybe next time I go to Joann's or something, I'll have to look for pipe cleaners. I don't have any pipe cleaners on hand. So I've just been using that little brush that came with this machine. But yeah, it'd be nice to run a pipe cleaner through it. Oh, they post it. So uh, yeah, I heard some chatter, uh, chatter for the Splendid Sampler 2 today. Um, Jenna, no, I think it starts in, I think it starts in June. Um, they're, they're using the book as the guide, but um, they're going to re release a block a week before the book comes out. They're going to, so they're going to release, I think, 20 blocks for free from the book, and it's going to be a block a week. I think starting in June. And then after after the 20, then everyone should have their books and then they'll be continuing um, with the book. Okay, start, Carol says it starts June, June 7th. Uh, Gretchen, go to either thesplendidsampler.com. You need the word the at the beginning. Or, um, or go to, well, I guess go to thesplendidsampler.com for all the information. But for more participation, head over to The Splendid Sampler on Facebook. It's a huge group. It's probably got like more than 30,000 people in or so. I'll have to check. I haven't been there in a little while. But that is where everyone's going to share their work and talk about it and ask questions and all that. It is definitely worth uh, joining, joining that group. But yeah, so one of the next projects I'd like to do is still going to be this sketchbook cover. And I know I keep saying that I'm going to have more information on that soon. But I really am hoping to have more information on that soon. I'm still looking at um, trying to get books for it. Um, but yeah, so I will have more. I'm hoping to think of, I'm hoping to work that out through the, over the weekend. So we'll have that project. That'll be a smaller project, a nice little sewing project in the middle of dealing with all these big quilts. And uh, um, we did talk about doing that other quilt that I would love to do yet, and that's the granny square quilt. I know we've been heavily into quilts lately. Um, so I'd like to throw in some other little projects that aren't so big and quilty while we're doing these quilts. So I want to do more embroidery. Um, you know, I have some mending. I, we can do some mending weaving. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so 
Well, my, uh, I think we'll do like just some of these big projects and they might overlap a little, like we'll work on one project for a little and then, um, maybe we'll work on a different project. Like we could, we could do a couple quilts at the same time in theory. And we will pepper all of those with some small projects. Cause sometimes, sometimes you just need a small palette cleanser, right? So I'm going to be thinking about all this a little bit more since we are already to like the quilting stage at this, at, with this quilt. Um, and I do want to do the sketchbook cover, which will involve embroidery. I'm going to embroider the cover of mine, my sketchbook, um, my sketchbook cover. It's a sketchbook cover with a zippered pouch in the back. So you got to learn how to do a zipper thing and stuff. And I'm, I'm going to have kits for that as well. Um, if you guys don't want to look for sketchbooks and zippers and, and all that stuff. Um, I want to do that while we're still working on, on this quilt. Email newsletter, Splendid Sampler, webpage today. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to go check. Uh, June 14th is the start. So, um, I will find out more about that. Like if I can do any filming with that, if we do, if I do end up being able to film some of the Splendid Sampler too, um, I don't know. I, I, it won't take up all our time. So last time it took up, it took up all of our evening time here, which is fine because that's the project we were working on, but now we have other projects too. So I want to do it in a way where it doesn't take up all of our time, but we still are dedicated to it. Um, and I don't know, I was wondering today if there would be any value uh, for you guys in not having it all be live. Like, would you rather see more edited videos? Um, it could still be the whole process, but it could maybe highlight some of the techniques a little bit more or do shorter videos on the techniques and then have the long version. I don't know. I'm I kind of wondering what you guys think about that. Because then we could maybe talk about it in, yeah, like one day a week. Um, or I could show you progress on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I would get those all up, though, either. So I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out, Gretchen. Uh, I think that's going to have to be my job this weekend, is, is really figuring that out again. Well, first I'll see if I can get permission to do it. Because it's not my project. And, you know, I want to have the go-ahead um, that it's okay for me to film it and film it live. Ooh, I just got a sense of the bobbin. Do we still bobbin? Yep, okay, we're good. My spidey sense went off all of a sudden. I realize I haven't been thinking of the bobbin for a while and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I should start thinking about it. But nope, we're still, we're still stitching. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Um, this time around, the Splendid Sampler is only going to be one day a week. Last time around, it was two a week. And that was, that was a lot, especially when we decided to like needle turn applique a whole giant thing or something, you know? Please don't burn out on us. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, I'll figure out a way to do it. It's just kind of like a planning scheduling thing. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to abandon projects and I don't want to, um, I don't want to only be working on that project just cause I'd like to do some other little projects. And I know I've been promising we were going to work on some projects, so I don't want to abandon those either. I just got to think it through yet. But I think uh, if they let me do it, I think it would still be fun. Um, I know there's value in it because last time I learned so much um, from stitching, stitching the splinted sampler blocks. And if I can provide any help for anybody, then, then to me, it's, it's worth it. Cause I want you guys to feel comfortable and happy with sewing and trying new things. And, um, to me, that's a good enough reason for me to, um, do it again. And, you know, I had fun too. <laughs>
Actually, tomorrow I think I'm going to spend a por I have to watch. I'm doing some, um, like, video. Um, like, I have, like, a class that I'm looking at on YouTube. So I think I might try and finish up my binding on Splendid Sampler 1 quilt. So what a better way to celebrate that, <laughs> finishing that, than start a whole other Splendid Sampler. <laughs> uh. I already have the book pre-ordered, so I'm committed. I've committed to that at least. <laughs> you need a babysitter for the kids so I can quilt. Sounds like a good plan to me, Amy. <laughs> All right. Oh man, we got only two little things, dude. We are speed demons tonight. Um, we're gonna still get done a little early, and I did one whole other um, one whole other line tonight. I guess I didn't chit chat so much. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of this. So there's that. But this is great. So if we can start picking up the pace and do three lines of these a night. Yeah, pedal to the metal, exactly. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be ready, uh, ready to start the free motion quilting. I think I'll take all the pins out before we do that. And I think I'm going to be free motion quilting in the pattern uh, lines. I'm going to leave the red ones as is because I just think that kind of neat. And I think all this pattern would hide my crazy beginning learning stitches more than uh, um, the red would. <laughs> so I think that's my thought process there. Let's see. Make it thinner. Oh my gosh, you're thinking about doing, Jenna, you're thinking about doing the second Splendid Sampler as the back of your first Splendid Sampler? Hooey, that's going to be a major quilt. <laughs> that's going to be like crazy awesome. All right, guys, we did it. Got three done tonight. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at things here. All right, so... We've stitched in the ditch, so you can't really tell um, that anything's happening on the front. Yeah, here, here we don't have any more. So we've gone here to to here. Oh, you guys can't see over here. So we've done we've done one, two, three, and then a half. So we've three and a half done out of eleven. I think there's eleven. So we got we got quite a few yet. We got. One, two, three. We got three and a half to go on, on this side. And then I think there's like four on the other side. But all right, it's coming along. But I wanted to see what it looks like on the back where we can start to see the little chevrons because I think that's cool. Ooh, Carol, you're going to do the second one with uh, Christmas fabric. That sounds uh, like a nice idea. Just like doing a theme one. All right, so I think, let's see if we, there you go. I don't know if you guys can see with the lighting, um, but now we can start to see the little Vs in the back. I think that's going to be cool. Um, the back's going to be really neat because once we, once we um, do the free motion quilting, the free motion quilting will only be in every other zigzag. So we're going to have this cool texture, this like blank zigzag, and then a really dense zigzag and another blank zigzag. I think it's just going to be really neat. On, on the back as far as the quilting goes. And our stitches still look okay, so I'm... Tension looks looks good still. So I'm happy! All right! Uh, so, okay guys, I think that is that for tonight. We will pick this up tomorrow and maybe try and get three more. Um, three more, which would be a row and a half done. That would be pretty cool! All right, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Hello, hello again! <laughs> you didn't see me uh, at the beginning of this. I got my, my blue blocking uh, glasses on again. I finished that Why We Sleep book. I put that link underneath here. Um, that's my favorite book of the year so far, uh, Why We Sleep. But they mentioned the blue light. And I know you guys have probably heard that before. You don't want to um, have a lot of blue light. But it goes into the, the science behind that. And... Uh, uh, if you are looking at blue light before you go to bed, it can stop the triggers, like the melatonin uh, um, production and all that. It can stop all the things that help you get to sleep. Um, it can push that like one to two hours later if you're looking at the blue light. So if you 
um, really want to go to bed at, at 10, your body's making it feel like 8. Uh, so that's kind of a problem. So uh, I, I don't usually look at my phone a lot, but then I realize, wait a sec, I do this live in the evenings, and I have my lights are LED blue lights, and they're shining bright on me, right at me, and it's the phone. I'm looking at the phone, and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm getting too much blue light in the evening. So in the so to try and get better sleep, <laughs> I am going to start wearing these at night with you guys again. And I just think they're wacky and I like wearing them. <laughs> but alright guys, um, I will let you be for tonight. Uh, thanks again for joining me and I will be back here at 8.30pm Central Time tomorrow. And I'll get this video up at YouTube, on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. <laughs> you love them. I call them my um, Barb from Stranger Things glasses. I think they're kind of silly. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great evening. Good night.